we know that endoplasmic reticulum is a factory that folds protein, quality controls protein folding, and also delivers the protein to a warehouse. And that warehouse is Golgi apparatus. From the Golgi apparatus, these proteins are differentially sorted for delivery to either cell membrane or lysosome or mitochondria or many other locations inside the cell. But in order to deliver it to specific locations either outside of the cell or there some specific organelle inside the cell, the cell needs specialized vesicles which are just like trucks which would leave the warehouse to deliver the parcels in specific locations in the city. So in this video, we would look at one that kind of truck, which is known as clathrin coated vesicles. So as the name suggests, it is clathrin coated. So it is coated by clathrin and clathrin is produced by a complicated lattice of triskelion molecules. The triskelion molecules, as depicted here, has a heavy chain of 180 kilodalton and light chain of 35 kilodalton. And these triskelion residues attaches to each other at, a, at, a, at their head domain and form the complicated uh, clathrin lattice all around the vesicle. This kind of clathrin coat help to ensure that the vesicle identity is maintained while it is transported. Now we follow the endocytosis of one receptor which is uh, which is going to be endocytosed and a clathrin coat would be formed. So here is a receptor, a G protein coupled receptor. Now it, it is undergoing a ligand induced endocytosis. So several adapter proteins such as beta arestine would invite other adapters like AP2. Now AP2 or adapter protein 2 is very important because adapter protein 2 serves as a platform where these triskelion molecule can associate and build up in form format of a vesicle. There are additional bar domain proteins which binds around these receptor complex to create membrane curvature and allow the membrane to come inside this forming coat. Now once it is happening the membrane is evaginated, invaginated and the clathrin coat is building up around this invaginated membrane situation. Now after a while the clathrin coat is ready and it is hanging from a membrane at, at a small stalk. Specialized protein such as dynamine associates there and dynamine is a GTPase and it sort of pinch off the vesicle from the membrane. As a result, the vesicle is released from the membrane and it is endocytosed. Once it is endocytosed, there are several and, and it has reached its destination. There are several proteins such as oxalin and HSC70 chaperones which help to disassociate the coats. Now when the when the sort of you can imagine this thing is like when the parcel is reaching its destination then it it is not required to be coated properly right for protection. So now the coat could be removed or the protection could be removed to reveal the parcel. So similarly inside the cell the clathrin coat is removed when the vesicle which is endocytosed is reaching its destination with the help of oxalin and HSC70. Now we look at where does clathrin coated endocytosis happening and where does where other places does clathrin coating is required. So clathrin coated endocytosis happens from wherever uh, the proteins that are trying to get endocytosed from outside of the cell, those vesicles are budding off with a clathrin coat on it. And they mostly fuse with early endosome. Apart from that, vesicles that are budding out from the trans Golgi network also 
seems to have clathrin coat around them. Apart from clathrin coat, there are two other type of coated vesicles like COP1 and COP2 coated vesicle. COP1 coated vesicle is important for retrograde transport from ER to Golgi and COP2 coated vesicle is helpful for anterograde transport from ER to Golgi. Now about this COP1 and COP2 coded vesicle, I have a separate video. You can watch this on the link on the end screen. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.